So let's continue this time clock application. We have two web pages. This first web page over here is um, is able to log in values to this Firebase database that we have. So whenever we push this login button, you'll see that we're logging values to this database. Let me go ahead and refresh this. I made some changes to the code. So we're locking values um, to the database, but we have, an, we have two issues with this. Well, first off, um, in the code that we originally have, you can see that we have these values that have a child node attached to them. But rather what we want to do is we want to have this initial node have a um, value of true rather than having a value that is a child right here. So we can do that by updating the code. So instead of adding a child here that I've incorrectly told you to do, we'll go ahead and delete that and we're going to instead of setting, which will write over every value in the database, we're going to update, which will append. So now if we refresh the page and we'll go ahead and start adding values, you'll see that we're appending as we have here in the beginning because I forgot to refresh this page. But you'll see that we're instead getting just a single node with a key value pair rather than this node that has a child attached to it. So let's delete all the values here. One issue that we're still having, however, is that the um, the year and the it's formatted in a weird way for me anyways because I'm from the United States where the year is coming first followed by the month and then the day. I'm more used to the day sh or sorry the month showing first followed by the day and then the year. And if we go ahead and save this and then refresh the page, take a look at what that format might look like. You'll see that we have the month November 9th. 2017 as I'm accustomed to looking at and note that you'll see that I'm doing so many clicks but not all the values are getting added to the database because um, some of these nodes aren't unique at all um, they have the same you know the same uh, <laughs> they have the same seconds and if we added milliseconds you would see that we would have all those values getting attached but because we're only specifying that we want to attach it and um, the most accurate value is to the second, you'll see that some of them are getting overridden. Okay, so now what we want to start doing is in this employee timestamps page. Um, let's go ahead and save this. I think something's getting... We're going to want to start displaying that information. So let's open it up. So now we want to start displaying the data that we're receiving inside the HTML. So if you go to the console, you'll see that we have these objects here, or we have an object, it's a snapshot, and the snapshot contains key value pairs. Well, we want to get that key there. Uh, so what we can do is in employee timestamps, instead of logging the snapshot value, we can create a variable called um, employee timestamp key and then we'll set it equal to object dot keys and then of this snapshot value and then rather than logging that we'll log this new array that we're creating called employee timestamp key and then we'll save it refresh the page and you see that we get a new array and this array is filled with a um, every every element in this array is that that uh, is the data that we're receiving from the database here it's the key so then we can put this in a callback and we're going to start getting into callback or sorry we're just going to put this in a function that accepts parameters so this function will be called function convert timestamp key array um, no what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna start wanting to um, convert this yeah so we're gonna convert timestamp sorry guys key array to HTML and this is gonna accept 
this employee timestamp key parameter. So that's going to be an array and then followed by the, uh, we'll get there in a second. So let's first make sure that we're able to log this array that we're receiving in that function. So we're going to log array and we're going to call convert timestamp with employee timestamp key. And if we've written this code correctly, we're going to see exactly the same um, items in the console that we see here. So we'll refresh and there we go. You see the same exact things. Now what we're going to want to do is have this accept a callback and that callback will be function um, replace HTML in div and this will have a selector followed by the div that we want to replace div to replace and then the HTML that we're going to want to replace it with and then we're going to want to iterate through every element in that array that we're receiving here so we're going to create a for loop so for then we're going to have a counter var we could have it called i but in this case i'll just have it counter and then while counter is less than the length of the array that we have so array dot length we're going to want to have counter increase by one value and then every time that fires off we're going to create an array up here var converted timestamp array and then we'll have it equal to just an empty array and then we'll push each one of those values into the array. So up push and then um, array at the counter item in there. And then finally, we'll do this callback function, which in this case will be employee timestamp key. And if you can see here, this function, and then I'll put a comment, callback is employee is uh sorry replace html in div it accepts three parameters and i know that i'm going to want to change this id here employee timestamps div it's it it's in fact an id so i need to use a hash as the selector and then as the string i'll put the div there and then html to replace will be a new variable i'll create um well instead of that converted i'll put HTML to replace is equal to an empty string. Excuse me for messing up. And I have a cat on me right now, so she is digging into my leg. One second. Okay, so HTML to replace is going to so every iteration of this array we're going to add the following string and I will explain what this means in just a second let me just make sure that this is going to in fact work and then we'll do HTML to replace this function here is going to go to so we're gonna add both the selector and we're gonna concatenate it with the div to replace which will be um, both of these added will equal to this ID here and then we're going to replace it with by doing HTML we're going to replace it with that new HTML that we put which will be HTML to replace so I'm going to go ahead and just refresh this page and we'll see if we're doing anything incorrectly at 52 unexpected string so I didn't put a plus sign there You see callback is not a function um, because we have not put a callback here yet. So the callback that we're going to want to use is um, replace HTML in div. And now what you can see in this code is every time that we add or modify a value, it's going to append this array with that value. So let's go through it because I kind of ran um, through some of the code without explaining it too well. So what essentially is happening here with the callback is once we go through this loop, 
we're going to place an array in this callback and only after we have every value in this array um, added to this <clears throat> every iteration added to this array will this callback be fired all off so this means that we have time to go up to a database on the web and retrieve data and then after we retrieve that data from the database that's when we're going to initiate this function that's when we're going to go inside of this div right here and we're going to append um, well what we're doing is we're going to go through every single element in the array that we've retrieved from the database and we're going to add this HTML code here that essentially just makes it its own h3 right here so because our database has two, four, six, seven values, we're going to have seven different H3 tags, which you see here. And if we were to delete something, you'll see that we're going to have code that's going to um, automatically or rather dynamically um, change to that. So I hope I'm making sense here, and if not, then I'm going to try to explain this a little bit better in the next video, and we're going to start building on this a little bit more.